Hello everyone and welcome. We're back and today we're going to be continuing our playthrough as the Baltic Union. We're going to try and wrap things up today, but we've uh, we've been going for a little bit of a slog, so I'm not sure how much progress we're going to make, but we're going to get straight into it. So, by the looks of it, where we left off, the Soviets are just using the same tactic they always use of just ramming themselves into the wall. Um, doesn't appear to be working. We do have a red battle up here, actually. I'm not quite sure what's up with that. I know it's not their fault, but I do have a very strong will to just blame the Italians because they are over here for some reason. So I think we'll most likely have to just continue on with our normal strategy of allowing them to pummel into us, waiting for their other units to deorg and then pushing back out. What we are going to have to do is we need to get as much war participation as possible. Uh, one, of the guy, one of you guys in the comments said that, you know, I should be using uh, slightly different tactics and not, you know, shoving my men into their line as much to conserve manpower. Uh, and I fully agree. Normally, that is exactly how I would play. I'd minimize my casualties as possible by not attacking unless I know I can win. The problem with that is Germany will take all the war support if we do that. So that is kind of why I'm sacrificing manpower in order to get more war participation. Uh, as you can see, I've got 14%, which isn't awful because it's more than Italy and Romania. But we need to get it as high as possible. So what we are going to want is... We're too late in the game and we have no research and no production capacity to make tanks. Uh, it's just, you know, it wouldn't really be worth it because we have, you know, I mean, we have 300 because of our, we've captured it, but we've got zero tank production and it's 1942. If, the, if we were doing a playthrough where we suddenly gained 100 factories, yeah, we could probably go into tank production, but it's just, it's just not feasible for us with our 27 factories at the moment. So instead... Once we get some factories and we get some spare uh, production, I'm going to invest in a big, large 40 width infantry unit, which will have anti-air, anti-tank, and it will be set up in a way where that will be our tanks, effectively. Uh, that's because we've gone down the mass assault doctrine, which means our infantry is much better. So because of that, we'll make a big 40 width infantry and we'll use that to gain some encirclements. We'll most likely also build a couple cavalry, just so when we get the encirclements, we can quickly fill the lineup. The thing with the Soviets is it's kind of just who whose line breaks first. If you can get around their line while pinning them, they have so much territory brack here that you can force them to fall back. So it's all about just getting those encirclements. But in terms of manpower, for the first time, we're actually kind of profitable on it. Yeah, we've got we filled up all of our reserves in the field. We've got forty thousand in the bank, and we're not even finished mobilizing. We've got another four-ish percent left to mobilize. Uh, we're not going to get any more though after that that's kind of it unless we want to step up our conscription even more which you know we could but an extra 15 pro it would get us about i mean it, it would get if we went from service by requirement to scraping the barrel the extra 15 percent it's going to get us about 900,000 to a million manpower so it is a significant amount but it's not something that i would want to do purely because of how negatively it will affect our country All right what we need to do now is start looking for places where we can, you know, make a breakthrough. You know, tiles like this are really good because you can attack from three different directions to gain that little bit of an edge. But I think we, it might be worth to try and not attack here and push down. Because if we can force them into a pocket, they're either A, going to have to retreat, or B, they're going to get encircled eventually. But the, the thing is, at the moment, is every single one of our tiles is just being attacked by the Soviets. So... Not only can we, we, we can't push because we're just being pushed into the whole time. So we're going to have to let them just drain their attacks for the time being. We're slowly replenishing our fighters. We're upgrading the infrastructure in our capital just because the more we have in our capital, the more we'll be able to send to all of our other provinces. Oh, Italy, come on. You better, you better, you better fix that. I swear to God. Oh, down here as well. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> It, you better get on that, Italy, because if you capitulate, the Eastern Front is doomed. Yes, yeah, so I'm not really sure what to do about this. Uh, the Soviets are just just pounding me. They just they won't quit. They just keep going. And um, yeah, I don't really know what to do about it. We're kind of a, a stalemate. Um, I can't push. They can't push. It's going to take years for them to run out of manpower. Uh, we're actually coming up to a ratio of 3 to 1 at this point. If we can get this encirclement, that's going to be great for us. We've only got one unit to pin, though. That's the only thing.
And well, hey, look at that. We have finally captured our port back. Took us a took us a very long time to do that. I kind of just gave up on trying to get an encirclement, and instead we uh, just kind of full force pushed into them. It would be nice if we could get a few troops around here, but I'm not sure if we're going to be able to. Yeah, so it is actually getting to the point now where manpower is becoming a huge issue. For us, uh, we might have to stop pushing. Like, I just... We're going to have to... We need to either step up our conscription, or that's it. I, I don't know what to do. We've still lost less than uh, Romania. Hungary's slacking a bit. Uh, but yeah, if you look at the Soviet Union, we've done 3.1 million casualties to them, and we've lost 700. So that's about 4.5 odds, which, not awful. But yeah, they've lost 10 million, which is a huge amount. They've still got, however, 5 million in the bank, and they're only on service by requirement. So that's a little bit worrying, but we'll see how that progresses. Italy still hasn't got Rome back, and they've kind of just given up with Sicily, which, you know. Uh, Greece still holding on somehow, not really sure how. Vichy France has actually navally invaded them. That's not something you see every day. Uh, what I have done that is costing us a lot of manpower is I've built eight large infantry divisions. So this is the template. So each one of them costs about 20,000 manpower. Uh, I've gone for a 40 width infantry division with four artillery, two anti-tank and two anti-air because that kind of covers all bases against tanks and the air force and stuff. I'm not sure how good the division is. It might have been better just to have infantry, but I wanted a bit of anti-tank, I wanted a bit of anti-air, so this is what I've gone with. It's not something I've actually gone with before, so I guess we'll see how it works out. The year is 1944, August 2nd, at approximately midnight. The Soviets have been pounding into us for months, and we've nearly depleted our entire reserve of manpower. While we have achieved a stalemate, and the security of the Balkans has been achieved, we have not been able to defeat the Soviet menace, and the Red Army harasses us more and more every day. Our borders are secure, but only barely. So I think I'm gonna have to call it there, guys. Um, is that the best outcome? No! And I'm sorry, but I said at the start of the series that Lithuania would take on the Soviet Union, and we have done that. It's happening right now on screen. We, the, Lith the Balkan Union, Lithuania, is attacking the Soviets. You cannot dispute that. that, that that's just facts. And that's like science and stuff, so you can't even argue with it. So is that the best outcome? No, and I'm sorry if that's disappointing. But if you want me to do a part two, let me know down below. As it stands at the moment, the Balkans were at the mercy of the Soviet Union. We were about to be capitulated by them. We went from being seconds away from losing our capital and capitulating to now we've actually pushed out against them. And not only have we held our own territory, but we're at no risk of losing it. We have secured the Balkans. If we wanted, we could make another fallback line, build some forts, and we're at no risk of losing any of our territory. Overall, we've lost 918,000 men and they've lost 4.1 million to us, which puts us at odds of about four to one. So I think overall, Lithuania taking out four million Soviets, not bad. I said Lithuania would take on the Soviets and Lithuania has taken out four million Soviets. So if that's not taking them on, I don't know what is. So if you'd like me to do a part two, let me know and I'll do that and I'll try again and I'll try to actually succeed and take them out. But as it stands at the moment, you're just going to have to deal with my bullshit. I apologise. So with the grand total of 4.1 million dead Soviets attributed to us, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Wait, what the fuck is going on down here? Quick guys, run for it while they're not looking. Okay, if we can just quickly encircle Leningrad. We're actually doing it. There we go.
we're in. We've actually done it. I bet you didn't know the Balkan Union was actually the ones who took out Leningrad. Okay, let's quickly see if we can grab as much territory as possible. I must say, I didn't see that one coming. Better update that ratio from 4 to 1 to 5 to 1. Stalin, you might want to slow down. Oh, there it goes. Might want to update that ratio again. We've actually now officially caused more casualties than Germany. So with all that being done, we've lost 1.1 million men. I bet you didn't even know the Balkans had a million people, but we've taken out 7.3 million Soviets, giving us a ratio of seven to one. And to finish it all off, hey Stalin, I've got a present for you. And with all of that, our borders are secure. The Soviets, while still intact, are permanently crippled. They've lost 20 million men, 8.3 of which were dealt by us, giving us a grand total of a 1 to 8 ratio. So, after that little bit of an encore, I thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.